2NURFM, a broadcast service of the University of Newcastle. It uh, looks like there are some new things that are happening in, uh, in the space of phonics testing. That is being touted as the new thing, but apparently that's already happening in schools. Can you explain? Well, the minister at the federal level, Mr Birmingham, and his team are announcing the likelihood of putting in from next year a literacy and a potential subset of numeracy tests for year one students. So think about it. Coming out of kindergarten, Mm. we now will have basically a NAPLAN-like test. It's not good enough in three, five, seven, and nine. Let's do it in one. I don't know how I feel about that. I get a little uncomfortable when I I hear massive testing for, what, six-year-olds? Yeah, so the real issue is that there probably are some identified gaps in students later on as they enter secondary school, for example, maybe year seven student who's reading at the fourth grade level. And so the thought is, let's go back to the source of that and try to identify and let teachers early on make the changes so they don't get to secondary school already behind. So that idea Mm. actually probably makes sense to all of our listeners. However, it repeats what teachers already do. Anybody with a a child in kindergarten, year one, year two, already know that what teachers do every day, we call them formative assessment. We gauge where kids are. We adjust our instruction to it. We're teaching the literacy skills already. Investing in a new test will just tell us what we already know, which is actually misdirecting resources that could be used elsewhere. So this is really, it seems like we're just doubling up and and wasting the valuable time that we have just that one single year. So I guess why have they decided to go with this and why are we not using that time effectively to implement some other strategies? Well, it's a, it's a continuation of strategies that actually mistrust teachers as experts to know what they're doing. And the assumption is that extra stick that will come along if you don't do well because your school will be identified as having kids below will just drive you to make changes in your teaching. But anybody who knows the early childhood and early primary sector knows those teachers are already switched on to do that. If those resources, instead of catching teachers being bad, were set at professional learning of teachers who are working with kids who are increasingly more diverse, children who come who don't speak English first, the number one population growth in New South Wales are kids coming with a second language. You could see they might struggle in the early years in their English. They're just learning it for the first time. Kids who have a special need or have learned differently. If professional learning of teachers were put to teaching them how to differentiate, that would allow us to do the instructional changes needed to help them. Finding a way to pay for another test will just mean we already know those gaps exist, which we actually already do. So... With that being the case, what are some of the things that we should be doing, perhaps in place of this testing, which seems to be a a lot of doubling up? Well, one example I'd like to use is, do you think all kids in kindergarten know how to ride a push bike? Do they automatically go in and they're good? Is it about then most kids have figured out, or when did you learn how to ride a bike? Oh, probably four, five, six, somewhere around there. So do you think most kids start school riding a bike? Being able to get up on a bike and just roll down the street. I would say most do. But then there's some that might not for whatever reason. They might have been injured. They might be a little less whatever we might call coordinated. They may just never have had a bike. So you could see if that's 25%, do we need a test? We just, we already know that. They don't. So what we need to do is give them practice riding a bike. That's how you actually learn. You fall over a couple times and you get it right. You wobble a bit and all of a sudden you're straight ahead. So if you use that for reading, what we have to do is practice reading. The kids that come to school already on grade level in reading come from families who read early and often with their kids, sometimes in the womb, all the way through. So books in the home are actually a rarity across the socioeconomic spectrum. Books, reading with kids in the bathtub, on their laps before bed, in bed before bed, on car trips rather than all the videos and all the apps. Reading is the fundamental way to boost literacy skills. So we need more of that, not more tests. So uh, I guess for those, for, from, the, from the parents' side of things, get as much reading as you can, make the books, uh, the experience of reading as fun as you can while actually slipping in a little bit more reading whenever you can. Yes, and I would use the Kindle or the iPad or the iPhone as a supplement. There's a tangible component to turning pages on sheets of paper and traditional books, and those will create a relationship with textile, the number of senses that we have in the tips of our fingers, and create a stimulation that kids will never forget, particularly if you have a young child on your knee while you're reading a book and they're helping and turning pages. It's a really cuddling, loving moment that builds nurturing. And if you remember from other conversations we've had, nurturing is the first re- prerequisite to learning. Nurturing, doing that more than one day a week and, and then engaging. So reading with your child is the number one way to boost literacy skills. Mm. I guess you're just not going to get that, that emotive component from swiping on a, a keyboard, on, on an on a iPad, are you? It's great as a backup. <laughs> it really shouldn't replace books and probably mm. won't, but keep 
keep in mind what we have to do is push back on the notion that more tests will actually increase anything. Actually, more learning and more reading increases more reading. More reading, less testing. I like it. Yep. Well, I'm kind of putting words in your mouth, but I think we kind of yep. arrived That's at the same are. spot. All righty, Professor Thanks, John Mark. Fajetti, we'll catch up with him next time around. This time, phonic testing at 2NURFM 103.7.